Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Neighbor put a huge boulder in front of my garage, blocking my driveway. Never mess with a geologist. Dealing with entitled neighbors usually is not fun. However, every now and then someone messes with the wrong neighbor. If your neighbor happens to be a geologist, nobody would expect that person to be vindictive, right? In this case, I almost felt sorry for my neighbors who had to deal with me after using a boulder to block my driveway. Yes, they placed a boulder in front of my driveway and blocked me out. Let me give you a little backstory on this first. I have a PhD in geology and live in a beautiful, diverse neighborhood in Southern California. In 2019, a young couple moved next door to us. At first, I was a little worried because they seemed like the college frat type. However, they were polite and actually introduced themselves to us. They did have a few parties in the beginning, but they were always respectful and kept the music down. Our driveways were right next to each other as well making it one big driveway, and they always made sure that no one parked on our side of the driveway. They seemed absolutely lovely to have as neighbors. And they were absolutely lovely. Until one day they just decided that they were not. See, in the driveway, near the front of it we had this, decorative, boulder to split the driveway. My household only parked on the left side, and the neighbors only parked on the right side. It was a little bit of an eyesore, but it worked out great with the previous neighbors. When the new neighbors moved in, we explained to them the purpose of the boulder, and finding a newer, divider, in the future. They assured us it was no problem, so that is just what we had continued to use to divide our driveway. Until one day when the young husband next door decided that he did not like it anymore. Well, I am assuming it was the husband. Do you how hard it would be to move this boulder? Extremely hard. But he found a way and one morning when I woke up, the boulder was moved over a little more into my side of the driveway. It made it hard for me to get my car out of the driveway. I went over next door to see if anyone was home either ask them what was going on and ask them to help me move it back. If they did not like the boulder, I was willing to work them to find another way to divide our driveway that did not get in the way. However, no one ever came to the door. So, I had to ask my husband to come outside and help me move it. After we moved it, everything was okay for the next few days. The neighbors stayed friendly with us and did not mention anything about the boulder, so we just ignored the whole situation and moved on with life. It was an honest mistake. Ha ha, right? Again, everything was fine with these neighbors until it was not. See, one night they were having a huge house party. The music was a little louder than normal, but whatever. I was not willing to start a fight or anything over it. I just turned my TV on a little louder and went to sleep, as I had rot the next day. Except you see, the next day I had to call out. Because the boulder was back in front of my driveway. Except this time, it was completely blocking my car. I could not even get my car out of the driveway. And well, that pissed me off. So, I decided to do something about it. Being a geologist, I had a variety of tools and instruments in my garage. And I decided that I was going to use a special auto chipper to turn this boulder into a big pile of rocks and debris. I was surprised my neighbors did not wake up to the sound of it, however they were partying pretty hard the night before. If they were awake, they just thought I was doing yard work. But after I spent some time turning this boulder into a big pile of gravel, used a push broom to push the ginormous pile into the neighbor's side of the driveway so that they could see it when they finally woke up. But if that was not the icing on the cake, I decided to take a picture of it, and posted it to our local neighborhood Facebook page. I included a short paragraph on the incident and captioned the post, never mess with a geologist. Many people were commenting and interacting on it, and the next morning when I woke up, I was happy to see that the boulder had been cleaned up, and a newer, smaller boulder had been placed where the original one was. At least I did not have to pay for anything. The next story is titled. You will come in when this warehouse opens. I used to work in a warehouse and one day we got a new floor manager. He had this grand idea that he was going to make an already functional supply warehouse work even better. It is important to note that all of our deliveries were sent out on time, received on time, 
no workplace accidents other than the occasional stubbed toe or splinter from a wooden box. This place ran about as smoothly and efficient as possible, but it wasn't good enough for the new manager. He made it a point to check on everyone, getting into things that weren't his business and things he didn't know about. One of his biggest things was making sure that everyone was at work on time. We didn't have a time clock, we just wrote down when we got in and when we left. The new manager insisted that a punch card system would work much better for us, but the owners weren't willing to invest in that. So, new manager would spend every morning watching everyone come through the front door. We had maybe 50 people who worked there, so he made sure to count who came in and when. Anyone who walked in the door past 8.05 am got written up. That is when he met the old guy. Old guy had been with the company pretty much since it opened. He knew everything and everyone there. Great guy and everyone liked him. On the second or third day of new manager watching everyone come in, he sees old guy walking in the front doors at 8.15. New manager rips into old guy telling him that he was late, that it was unacceptable, and that he was getting written up. He is yelling in the middle of the warehouse where everyone can see and hear him. Old guy tries to explain but gets told to shut up. New manager tops this all off with an order. This warehouse opens at 8 am sharp every day, 5 days a week. And I expect you at that door at 8 am to begin your shift. You will be here when the warehouse opens. Is that understood? Old guy just kinda smiles, takes the paperwork, and apologies stating that he would be in tomorrow at 8 am just as he was told. The smug look on the new manager's face was picture perfect. He was certain that he had just fixed the biggest flaw in the company. The next day at 8 am sharp, old guy walked through the door and simply made sure that he was seen. Then he went off into the warehouse. That day was a nightmare. Orders were backed up. Trucks were waiting on paperwork. New manager is almost in tears because of the chaos. The owner comes in and starts trying to make sense of the situation with new manager, and they track the paperwork issue back to old guy. New manager is upset. But owner is concerned and asked old guy if everything is okay? Old guy just tries to hide his embarrassment saying that new manager wrote him up the day before and he was told that he had to come in at 8 am. Not at 4 am like he always did to get all the orders and paperwork ready for the day. The day before when he walked in the door, he had been coming in from a break. New manager tried to backpedal, saying he didn't know, that it was old guy's fault. Owner knew better. After that, the new manager wasn't working at the warehouse anymore, or for the company. He went off to become a new manager for someplace else. Thankfully, old guy knew what was going to happen and had most of the paperwork done for the day already, so we weren't too behind when the smoke cleared. I made this as a comment to a different post. Felt it deserved a full story. Enjoy. The next story is titled. Subdivision Pool Fight. I could really use some advice. I live in Idaho. This is a new subdivision only a couple of years old. They are still building houses. We moved into our house last August, and one of the reasons we chose this house over the other one on the other side of the city we were looking at was because of the community pool. The property management company closed the pool down almost a month early last year because someone spread fecal matter all over. Fine. We were just moving in. It happens. We paid our dues all $300 to the property management company after we were billed at the beginning of the year. I called the property management company April 1st of this year, almost 7 months after submitting our pool application, to get the key for the pool. They lost the application. Again, fine shit happens, and resubmitted the application. I also asked when the pool was going to be open. I was told it was typically open from Memorial Day to Labor Day. May rolls around, and no pool key. I have to call again to get them to send the key. We get a letter in the mail that says enclosed is the pool key, and no surprise, no key. Another call to get the key, and we finally get it. May 27th, we get an email stating that the pool will be open the following day at 8 am. May 31st, we get another email stating the pool will be closed until further notice. No explanation, no nothing. June 9th, we find out the pool will then be open on the 15th. After the 15th we realize our key doesn't work. We call them and give the key fob number, so they can reset it or whatever they do. Still doesn't work. My husband calls and leaves a voicemail for a return call on a Friday, and nothing until he tries calling again at the end of the following week. He finally gets a call back from them, and he is told that kids broke the lock on the gate. The gate works for some, but not all. These are key fobs, not house keys. 
Just wave over the latch, and it's supposed to open. That means it's the system not kids shutting rocks in the lock. I know that the rocks in the lock doesn't help. I called to speak to an officer manager on July 13th, and I didn't get a call back until yesterday. That took me sending an email letting them know they are violating the CC and R's. My husband also called them yesterday, and they have no notes about any of our previous conversations, or the fact we have called. I did tell them I wanted part of our HOA dues back because they help cover the maintenance for the pool we cannot access. I was told no. The lady that oversees our subdivision, who called me yesterday, laid all the blame on the homeowners and their children. She said she is doing everything in her power to fix this, and I pointed out that no she isn't because she doesn't return phone calls. I was informed that the part is on back order, and, do I know what's going on in the world? She also told me that they don't have to stick to the CC and R's, but we do. She also hung up on me, and yes, I was pissed and going off at the end. The GM called me today because of the negative reviews of left, yes, he did tell me that. He just wanted to explain that it's not their fault, and the pool isn't their job. He just put all the blame on the homeowners and their children. He also told me that I should take my money and go after those that are vandalizing the pool. I thought that is what was covered with our HOA dues. The part that confuses me is we are billed by them. Any and all exterior changes, adding a fence, and registration to get a pool key goes through them. The key comes from them. They order the parts and deal with the security company and police when needed for the vandalism. How is the common area not their job? Update. I've made a fuss about all of the areas the management company is in violation. I found out that our HOA board is the builder. I also turned everything over to the attorney general's office. The last story is titled. Older couple, car repair. TL. Doctor. Customer demands I put co-worker on the phone immediately even though they were with another customer. Starts swearing at me and tries to get me in trouble when I refuse to obey her. This happened a couple of months ago. For context. I work as a receptionist in the service department of a vehicle manufacturer. For anybody that doesn't know when a vehicle is experiencing a problem sometimes it isn't obvious what the issue is because another problem could be masking said problem. It's annoying because the car always ends up breaking down again after seeming to be fine after fixing. This is one of those stories. The story. This car is a 2005 model that came in on a tow truck not starting, engine turning over. Our first step, check the battery. It was running low, called the customer and quoted to replace and was approved. Replaced it and now everything lit up a but still didn't go. They carried out further diagnostic and ended up finding out another part needed replacing. I think it was a $1,500 repair on memory. Approved replaced and vehicle tested and worked. Customers came in and picked up. This had all happened in about a week. No problems just another fix. About a week later I answer a call it is the husband on the phone. The car stuttered and stopped on the side of the road and now won't start again. The wife, our entitled person, was there too. This was the conversation. Me. Hello this is business you're speaking with four pobs. Man. Hello, this is man, registration number. We got our car back last week after it was towed in for not starting and had a part replaced, it has been working fine until just now. We were driving and it kind of just stuttered, lost power and stopped. We aren't far from you can we please get it towed back in for another look. Me. Of course, that's no problems at all I will make up a job card and we will have a look as soon as possible. I will let your advisor and the workshop know what has happened and we will see it when it gets here. Man. No prob. Woman. What I want is to talk to the person that looked after us when we had the car in. We paid a lot of money to fix it. Me. Of course. Normally I would be more than happy to transfer you straight through. However he is at the counter with another customer at the mom. Women. That's not good enough. I want to speak with him now. Me. I am happy to put you on hold for him, but I will not interrupt him with another customer. Woman. Duck you. Put him on the phone right ducking now. She kept going for about 10 seconds. Once she finally stopped. Me. If you are finished. No. I am talking to you now and if you don't listen I will hang up this phone. You have three choices the first is I put you on hold and you wait for your advisor to be finished with the customers he is currently serving. Second I have all of your contact details I will get him to call you back immediately when he is available or three organize your vehicle to be towed in and he will talk to you in person when you arrive with your vehicle. Man. We will hold. Me. No problems. 
I will put you on hold and get everything entered into the system for your vehicle to be fixed as quickly as possible. Man. Thank you. It was only about two minutes after that the advisor was able to take the call. Apparently the wife was not in the call. The woman tried to complain about me, but my manager backed me up because I immediately told him about the call, and they pulled the recording just in case. He has a very strict don't put up with abuse policy but commended me for diffusing it in as professional manner as I could instead of just hanging up. The man apologized to me when his wife wasn't there and thanked me for getting the vehicle booked in immediately despite her behavior. I understand being frustrated that it wasn't fixed but yelling and screaming wasn't going to get it sorted faster. I went on holidays not long after, so I don't know much about what happened. I think the issue killed the part we thought was the problem which killed the battery. We had to replace the other part again but covered the cost of it the second time. They paid for the extra new part only that was actually causing the problem, our manager waived the cost of the part we had already replaced because it was no good again, this is standard as part of our workmanship warranty. I haven't seen them come back yet but I don't think they are due for a service until the new year. Thank you for listening.